Hi, I'm Tony Fowl. Uh, now for uh, quite some time I've had this uh, high speed spindle which I just use occasionally in the mill for internal grinding and on the miller machine uh, when I use very small cutters in order to get the surface speed up. It spins at uh, up to uh, 24,000 RPM but that's controllable through a, a VFD drive. Anyway, for some time I've been thinking of uh, using this to make a, a high speed sensitive drill which I thought would probably get a lot more use than it would on the uh, milling machine and lathe. But a few days ago on a local internet uh, classified ads list, something like Craigslist, I saw a picture uh, for this which is a, a drill press adapter stand to take a normal pistol drill like this. Now when I saw it I realised that this was the ideal donor um, in order to make the uh, sensitive drilling machine. It was built to much higher standards than most of the um, adapters I've seen for pistol drills. Uh, it, it's got a rack and pinion drive here, uh, quite a solid um, guide tube and um, uh, overall it, it, it was far better than uh, others that I had seen. And it morphed into this high speed spindle fitted here, it's counterbalanced by this weight system. Uh, so this video um, is going to uh, show how I converted it, it was pretty simple, uh, but also talk in detail about how to go about counterbalancing. Firstly we need to consider what we mean by a sensitive drill press. Now an ordinary drill press has got several contributors towards the force that we feel on the feed handle. Uh, the most obvious is the, is the force on the drill bit itself forcing through the, the metal that we're drilling. Uh, but then there's some friction in the mechanism and some on a force from some return mechanism. Now most drill presses that return mechanism is a spring. The ultimate sensitive drill press is one in which all the sources of friction and a returning force are completely eliminated. The additional forces of, of friction at the spring rate are relatively unimportant when we're only dealing with large size drill bits, say a quarter and upward. But when we're talking about drills of less than a, a millimetre, the, the force to drill through is quite low. If it was high we'd probably end up breaking the tool bit. So unless we can feel that, there's a likelihood that we could break these very small drills. If the force is swamped by the spring and frictional forces, so the idea behind a sensitive drill press is that you eliminate as much as possible any forces other than a direct multiple through the leverage ratio of the force on the drill bit itself which gives us the greatest chance of being able to feel what's happening at the drill bit and reducing our chances of breaking it. In this video I show some tests that I did on actually measuring these extraneous forces and seeing what we can do to reduce them. I'll show how using a counterweight is often preferable to using a spring. bore out to suit the uh, reduced diameter of the bearing housing. I wanted to find the uh, balance spot of uh, the, this 
total assembly with the uh, high speed spindle attached as well. So I've clamped this uh, hardened bar on here and moved this about until I got the balance spot, which was here. You can see that's I tilt it this way, it wants to go this way. If I bring it back, it wants to stay there. Uh, so I drew a line up from here and across the, the back. Unfortunately, it's just behind where the spindle motor goes, so there was room to drill and tap for the cable fitting. Right, for the counterweight, I needed a pulley system. Now, I was, I was pretty lucky that I found uh, uh, this piece in the scrap box pretty much as it was. It's got a, a, a wheel in one end with a, a groove in, suitable for a, a cable. All I had to do for the other pulley to get the cable clear of the column uh, was to use a wheel like this which I got from a, a washing line pulley similar to this one. Uh, so I just drilled an extra hole in here and put that through so I had the, the, the second pulley. Now onto this bracket I just welded a tube which was part of an old uh, bicycle which was just a, a, a perfect fit in here and then I had a tube which telescoped over that which I just tacked weld it here. Uh, so this tube is just to extend it upwards from the uh, original column so that when this is at, at the top this clearance. It just so happened that when I welded this top piece onto the tube I did it such that the cable spacing out from the column was such that the weight, counterweight, didn't was was clear from the, the, the column. That put the front of the forward pulley almost directly above the centre of this column. So I drilled and tapped the centre of that so that I could attach the cable to it. To see. Well, as a first test, I've got the cable coming more or less vertically straight down from the forward pulley directly above the hole that was drilled and tapped in the uh, rack here. Now, I can move it reasonably easily, but I can definitely feel some friction in there. It's the same wherever I put it. So let's just see what... Uh, sort of force it takes at the end of the handle to move it. Put this uh, fisherman spring balance on here. And it's about 0.16 of a kilogram. Well, what we've got in this test is the cable's fixed at the balance point, but the pulley's still in the original position. So the cable slopes back a little bit so the moments aren't um, exactly balanced uh, but we'll see with a close-up view that they're pretty close. You can see that uh, it, it's very easy to move just with a little finger hardly any noticeable force and uh, if we can see that it just moves under the weight of the handle Let's see if we can just get a torque reading on this. Zeroed. Now to move it. Well, it's about 0.1 of a kilogram, 100 grams. Okay, now I've extended uh, this by about 45 millimeters, which puts the cable coming from the balance point, but pretty close to vertically above so there's very little component in a horizontal direction. Uh, again we can see here that just the torque from the out of balance handle is enough to turn it quite easily and the, the, this absolutely negligible force I can feel when I move it with my little finger. So let's see if we can get a reading on this. It might be difficult because it's such a small amount. There. Well it started to move at about 0 0.04 of a kilogram, considerably less than in the other cases. 
Well now I've got the original spring uh, fitted, it goes from this peg to uh, one somewhere down here. Now we can see that the force, and I can feel that the, the force on the end of this varies considerably depending whether the uh, uh, spindle is at its highest position or whether it's at its lower position. That I think you can see the effect of the spring. Oh, we can see the spring here, by the way. Let's see if we can get a meaningful reading on the force required at the handle. Zeroed 0.35 of a kilogram in that position. Let's take it down to the when it's at its lowest position. Well, it's around 0.95 of a kilogram. So there's a big variation from whether we'd be drilling in this position or drilling from this position. So the feel would be totally different. In other words, for me, having the spring here is a non-starter to make a sensitive drill. So let's have a look at a summary of the test results that we had. Uh, before uh, doing that, I measured the leverage ratio between the amount that the handle moves down at the uh, point where I did the force measurements compared to the amount that the quill moves down or the, the high speed spindle moves down and there was a leverage ratio of about 20 to 1. This column represents the force that we actually measured. Uh, when we had the spring fitted we could see that the, the minimum value when the uh, spindle was at its highest position was um, uh, 0 0.5 and the maximum was 0 0.9 with much smaller values when we had the, the, the counterweight case 1, 2 and 3. Uh, this column is this one simply multiplied by 20 to 1. So this is converting the force on the lever to the force that would be applied to the drill bit uh, in ignoring friction. Uh, so we can see that with the spring we've got very high values uh, between 10 and 19 kilograms just to get it to move and uh, that would be quite high compared to the force that we would be getting on a say a sub millimeter drill bit so the spring or the effects of the spring would completely swamp out the feel that we were getting on the drill bit with very small drills. With larger drills the, the force on the drill would be higher and it wouldn't matter so much uh, but the whole purpose of having a sensitive um, uh, drill press is so that you know what's going on when you're using very small drill bits. Uh, now any of the cases where we've got the cable uh, fitted instead of the spring we can see that the, the, the forces on the drill bit would be much, much less than what they are in the case of the spring. We've seen the effect that trying to balance the moments uh, has by the position of the cable, but there's one moment that I've ignored so far, which is also quite important and will affect the optimum position of the cable. When we're actually drilling, we're applying an upward force from the drill into this whole assembly. Now that is creating a moment. And what that will do, because it's twisting this way, it will put a horizontal force on the rear part of the quill at the top and at the front part of the quill at the bottom of the guide rod. Just positioning the cable to, to give a zero moments or a very low amount of friction isn't the optimum position when we take into account the force when we're actually drilling. Now that force will vary tremendously of course because it will vary with the material that we're drilling, uh, with the uh, size of the drill bit, we'll, we'll 
naturally force harder when we've got a larger drill bit uh, in. We can go up to um, uh, a six and a half uh, millimeter drill bit in this, just a bit over a quarter of an inch is the maximum. And I can go down to sub millimeter a drill bit. So there's quite a wide range. Help balance that drilling force, and it's really only for the very small drills that I'm uh, concerned with. I'm going to use the cable mounted in here. So I'm going well here's the finished device. I put a coat of paint on it which makes it look a bit better. It's now fixed down onto a bench but it's been raised up with this uh, simple framework that I built to get the, the, the table and uh, the, the drills at a more suitable working height. I sized the, uh, the lifting frame so, so it would take this uh, drawer cabinet here which is quite convenient because I can keep collets and drill bits and associated bits and pieces uh, in it. So let's, uh, let's zoom in on this and uh, see how it works. I've got a piece of 4mm thick aluminium here. Uh, the uh, spindle is spinning at uh, 20,000 RPM and I've got a one millimetre drill bit in there. So, let's just see. I'm just applying the lightest of pressure, but I've got lots of steel. And there we are. Perfect hole, no broken drill bit. Okay, well, let's give it a tougher test. I've got some uh, seven millimetre thick uh, steel here. Easy peasy, perfect hole. Well, there's one final modification I did. I uh, put a couple of uh, T nuts uh, in the slots here and bolted this aluminium plate onto the top. Uh, there are two reasons for that. One was when I had a one millimeter or smaller uh, drill bit in here, when this was at the absolute uh, bottom, which was determined by this touching on here it didn't quite reach down far enough so this lifts up the top surface but also with uh, this particular drill it's mainly going to be used for doing small things and the, the T-slots uh, that, that went across the, the table were quite uh, uh, large um, so I decided to put this plate on and I'm just going to uh, uh, drill a hole and clearance hole through the, the middle with the biggest size drill that I'm ever likely uh, to put in here. Well, that's it. I can't think of any more modifications that need doing. It's ready for mainstream use. If you uh, like any of these videos, please uh, like, share and subscribe to my channel when you finish viewing. Thanks for watching.